Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Thursday, January 25, 2018. In the news tonight, GDF shows gross disrespect for media practitioners. Kawu's president says he will not resign amid calls for him to do so. TIGI rekindles call for park and media contract to be scrapped. And in court, a letter man sent to jail for one month after being caught trying to steal from a GWI vehicle. With details of these and all the stories, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for joining us. Beginning tonight's newscast, we tell you that the Guyana Press Association says the action of the Guyana Defense Force this morning can be described as gross disrespect to media practitioners. This is after a group of media workers stormed out of camp by Ghana after they were prevented from providing coverage of an assignment they were invited to. Find it more this Nikhil John do report. Approximately 20 media operatives walked out of the Ghana Defense Force annual officers conference which was held at base camp Aingana. Media operatives were initially invited to cover the opening ceremony of the GDF Annual Officers Conference on January 23, 2018, with no start time given. However, in a subsequent email, the media were informed that they should be at base camp Aingana at 9 hours 30 on Thursday morning. Upon arrival, the GPA said, Members of the media were told to wait under a Benab just outside the compound of the GDF, after which they were escorted into a room where they were told to await further instructions. However, while waiting, the opening ceremony commenced without being told what to do next, only to be told by a senior officer that he was following orders. After a few minutes, the media workers were led to the officer's mess hall, where the opening ceremony was being held. On arrival, the media operatives were told to wait in a lounge area while Chief of Staff Brigadier Patrick West could be heard giving his address. A senior army officer subsequently led the media to the area where the event was being held and media operatives were told to stand beside dozens of officers who were all comfortably seated. It was at that point that a decision was taken to walk out. The Guyana Press Association reminded the Guyana Defense Force of the importance of the media, not only as a group but as a major partner that also works to ensure the integrity and sovereignty of Guyana. The association said the media does not work in a vacuum and its members should be treated with the respect they deserve. It is unfortunate that the GDF continues to engage the media in this manner, even after repeated attempts to engage and work towards a better relationship, the GPA lamented. The GPA also sent a letter on January 15, 2018, which extends an opportunity to the GDF for more frequent engagements. To date, the GDF has not acknowledged receipt of this correspondence. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. President of the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union, Komal Chan, asserts that he will not resign but will continue his fight for sugar workers' rights. This follows calls for his resignation. Here is more. President of the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union, GAU, Komal Chan said the union will not be daunted by the false statements being circulated. He was at the time referring to a barrage of attacks published in the media calling for his resignation. Those are words that are implanted, and you talk about four workers wanted me to resign, you know. So, uh, the, the many people are calling many for many people to resign, but it's all premised on these two factors, the meeting with the government and this. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. So here we were doing all this militant work, and it was bedeviling production, just hours after, uh, we are not representing the workers' right. Defending the union, Chan called on the naysayers to pinpoint evidence of the union's failure to defend the rights of sugar workers. He also reiterated the union's position at the bargaining table with the government, where its disagreement was voiced. The union had initially argued for all redundant sugar workers to receive their seven pay in full and not in parts, as was decided by the government. But, you know, one doesn't have to pander to some people because they don't have 
they just talk as they want to talk. They don't have constituency. So I don't want to get into um, cross-talking and get into newspaper clashes with people. I, I prefer to ignore. The head of the union believes the decision was already made and the meeting the union merely asked to attend was a mere smoke screen. Chan reassured that the union will continue to champion workers' rights in ensuring their due severance are paid to them. So what extraordinary power or whether I have a magic, magic wand could have halted the government position? They were bent politically to close their states and to miniaturize the sugar industry and we do not know the fate of the remaining estates. We have to wait and see. Meanwhile, the government last Friday announced that workers that are to receive severance packages of $500,000 or less will collect all of their entitlements by January 31. Other workers will receive half of their money in January and the rest in the last half of the year. The Skeldon, Rose Hall and Enmore estates are expected to be closed this year. Meanwhile, in support of Chand, the National Association of Agriculture, Commercial and Industrial Employees made it clear that the GAU did not accept the plan of the government to pay sugar workers in installments. NASI has dubbed the article which claims that sugar workers are calling for Chand to resign as mischievous and misleading. NASI reiterates that it will continue to work in the best interests of its members. The Transparency Institute of Guyana Incorporated reiterates that the contract with Smart City Solutions should be scrapped and a tendering process should be done to select a contractor. This is despite the contract has been recently revised. Yanis Abrams filed this report. President of the Transparency Institute of Guyana Incorporated, Dr. Troy Thomas, restated that the parking meter contract should be scrapped and an appropriate tendering process to be conducted. This is after City Hall established a new committee to renegotiate the parking meter contract with Smart City Solutions. Dr. Thomas stated the amended contract does not deal with the fundamental issue of the arrangement between the Council and SCS. There are some fundamental problems with the, the contract um, in how it was um, arrived at. Um, which are not addressed by a renegotiation. Um, you might remember they, they, they did the single sourcing, which would not have been consistent with the laws of Guyana. Um, and so there wasn't really competition among potential suppliers or potential partners for um, implementing parking meters in Georgetown. The advocate for transparency said there were problems from the beginning which has not been able to be solved and the renegotiation of the contract was not going to solve it. The fundamental issue, we, we, it seemed like, like there were some uh, corrupt practices involved in um, arriving at the contractor and, and all of that. Uh, there is a lot we don't know about it, and, and those are still worrisome. We still have the same, essentially, uh, those issues have not been clarified. In September, the president of TIGI stated that those individuals who made the agreement with Smart City Solutions should be accountable for the trouble the city council is in presently. What is worse is that citizens were not informed prior to the contract being signed, affirmed Dr. Thomas. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Guyana Sugar Corporation has not paid to the Guyana Revenue Authority corporate taxes for approximately 10 years. Find out more in this report. Commissioner General of the Guyana Revenue Authority, Godfrey Stacia, has confirmed to media operatives that the Ghana Sugar Corporation owes the entity in excess of 10 years of corporate taxes. Stacia said the termination of over 4,000 workers of the entity will not damage the taxes to be collected. He, however, said the pay-as-you-earn PAYE was being deducted and transferred to the GRA. What we collect from Gaisuko should be the normal pay as yarn on behalf of their employees. In the early days, the pay as yarn used to be just over a billion dollars. At the end of 
last year it was just over 600 plus, 600 plus and a million dollars. So that is basically the difference between what we normally collect and what we would have collected. As for the contribution towards the national economy, that's not for me to pronounce on. He noted that Gaisuku has not been making profits for the last 10 years. Stacia said if the entity was paying its taxes, then the revenues collected by the GRA would have increased overall. Gaisuko at sea is paying on behalf of their employees. Right, so they still owe GRA a sizable amount of taxes. It's not for me to tell you how much, but, it's, but they do owe GRA a sizable amount of taxes, which if those taxes were paid, it would have increased our, our revenue collection. Right, and those taxes were, behalf, were deducted on behalf of, of its employees. The government will be closing three sugar estates during the course of 2018. Several billions have been transferred to Gaisuko from the public's purse to keep the entity afloat. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. More news to the head, do stay tuned. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me got so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, now me know the secret. I like all oh, you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Bushy Park Beach Barica presents at Chutney Soka Beach Party on Sunday 28th of January 2018 at Bushy Park Beach featuring Bunty Singh Myself and my little son Krish we come in here to mash up the place The Caddy Singh We come to, come to turn up the party until it turn over Steve Rampa Guess what yours truly is gonna be there Vanita Willie Come on we only have a good time And Sexy Sandel All backed by Notorious Sound while stock bar in attendance Chutney Soka Beach Party on Sunday the 28th of January 2018 at Bushy Park Park Beach, sponsored by Beachview Hotel and LS Haridat Sawmills. Eh uh eh, -uh. BB, is where you going with so much Windex for clean windows? All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh uh -uh, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home and Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Here's still with news update. Welcome back. Attorney at law Charles Ramson Jr. has filed an application in the High Court seeking to quash the appointment of Marlon Williams from the Local Government Commission. Ramson Jr. believes that the Minister of Communities did not hold any consultations before making the appointment. Find out more in this report. Attorney at law Charles Ramson Jr. filed an application in the High Court seeking to quash the appointment of Marlon Williams as a commissioner on the Local Government Commission. During an interview with Ramson Jr., he claimed that the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bolkan, unilaterally appointed Williams without holding consultations with the local democratic organs.
Chapter 4D of the Local Government Commission Act says, The Minister shall appoint one member of the Commission after holding consultations with the local democratic organs. And so I got an application, I sent in an application to the court, um, and it was today the order was granted by the Chief Justice Acting um, Roxanne George that the, 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 the NICI to quash um, the appointment of the, um, his name is Marlon Williams, who is the appointee of um, that the subject minister made. Adding to that, a letter was sent to the subject minister to verify whether he consulted with the Guyana Association of Municipalities, but a response was never provided. Um, the act requires that as a precondition or a condition precedent for him to make that appointment, he has to consult with local democratic organs. Um, the Local Democratic Organs Act defines what local democratic organs means. It was reported subsequently that when he was asked whether that consultation had taken place, that he had, he had consulted with the Guyana Association of Municipalities. That is an association that is not covered by the Local Democratic Organs Act. The attorney will await a response at the next court hearing scheduled for March 1, 2018. Once it can be proven that consultations did not take place, as stipulated in the Local Government Commission Act, Williams' appointment is likely to be quashed. The Local Government Commission was installed in October last year. The Commission was set up to monitor, oversee, examine and investigate the actions of municipalities and neighborhood democratic councils. President David Grange and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces today again expresses intention to ensure a full investigation into the deaths of hundreds of Guyanese, including the former Minister of Agriculture, Saturday Oso, during the period of troubles. The President said that his administration will ensure that the perpetrators are brought to justice. President Granger said that the previous administration never bothered to account to the nation for the hundreds of lives lost through criminal violence. According to the President, there were 1,431 murders from 2002 to 2009. Guyana will host the 24th Inter-American Congress on March 21 and 22. National Coordinator of the Guyana Tourism Authority, Donald Sinclair, says this is expected to put Guyana in a position to add its input to the tourism agenda of the Americas. More on Yanis Abrams' report. For the first time, Guyana will be hosting the 24th International American Congress of Ministers and High-Level Authorities on March 21 and 22, under the theme, Connecting the Americas Through Sustainable Tourism. Minister of Business with Responsibility of Tourism, Dominic Gaskin, expressed his happiness with Guyana hosting the conference. He mentioned it gives Guyana the opportunity to be recognized internationally. As far as Tourism is concerned, Guyana is a fairly young destination. But that doesn't mean that we have to be timid or that we have to take a back seat. I think we can have a place at the table, and I think hosting this event gives us a place at the table, at least as far as regional or this hemispheric tourism is concerned. Um, it's an opportunity for us, first of all, and um, Mr. Sinclair did mention this, to demonstrate our capacity to host high-level events such as this, international events. But more importantly, it allows us to, it raises our profile, and it allows us to showcase Guyana. National Coordinator of the Guyana Tourism Authority, Donald Sinclair, said, the Congress will have ministers and executives of tourism. Further, the national coordinator related to stakeholders, Guyana will use the opportunity whilst international officials are present to showcase culture among other items. Forging business alliances for connecting the Americas for sustainable tourism. That is why the OAS has been stressing that there be significant private sector representation at this Congress. And the responses that we've been receiving from places like Argentina, Mexico, El Salvador, and some other countries in the Caribbean 
suggest that the private sector is going to be playing an important part in the conversations that we're going to be having March 21 and 22. Because we know that it's through those business alliances that there can be movement in terms of the development of the kind of tourism that, that we need. So the hope is that the ministers would be able to interface with their private sector colleagues in order to hammer out, in order to thrash out ways forward, methodologies for driving sustainable tourism. The conference will include the 34 members of the Organization of American States and 70 international observers. The United Nations World Tourism Organization and World Travel and Tourism Council are expected participants in the conference. Reporting for MTV's News Updates, I am Yanis Abrams. Tom Clark Royston King says the main concern for homeowners in his city about the garbage fee is a collection of revenue. However, no fixed price has been attached to the garbage collection for residents in the city as yet. This means that such collection remains free. Yanis Abrams tells us more. The Mayor and City Council has commenced consultations on the proposed garbage fee for homeowners in the city. Tom Clark Royston King stated that for the three weeks of scheduled discussions, the Council will visit various communities for residents to voice their opinion on the garbage situation. Continue to do consultations in a number of areas. We, uh, over the next three weeks, we hope to be in Agricola, we hope to be in East and West uh, Rhinevelt, um, um, uh, South Rhinevelt, North Rhinevelt, East Penitence. We hope to be in the Commons Lodge area, and we are having a number of outreach meetings so that we can talk with residents and have their input into this idea of asking them to pay a small fee. King said the main concern of persons is the collection of the garbage fee. The main concern is how the money will be collected. And as I said in a previous press conference, we are looking at this and we're working on the modalities and we're considering a number of options as to how we can actually uh, collect this money from, uh, from homeowners. In a previous press conference, Tom Clark Rice King announced the council will be introducing a fee of $200 per barrel of garbage from February 1 for residents. Prior to this, there were some hiccups with garbage collection in the city after Purim Brothers Incorporated and Sivon's Waste Management pulled their services from Georgetown. The move of the disposal companies came as a result of City Hall's failure to pay the firm's monies outstanding for previous years. After central government intervened and pay off the council's debts, the two garbage collection firms returned to work. The fee for garbage collection from businesses are $5,000, $8,000, and $12,000. These are for small, medium, and large businesses, respectively. Meanwhile, King claimed that the council is looking to reduce the cost they pay for garbage collection. Currently, City Hall pays $33 million per month for garbage collection. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am... Yanis Abrams. Coming up, pilot calls on GCA to improve the infrastructure of controlling the airspace and policy being crafted to develop a disaster risk center in Region 9. Our Mohan Supermarket is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Our Mohan Supermarket carries your entire favorite brand name goods as well as many of the locally produced goods at the lowest prices. Groceries, toiletries, confectionaries, household items, personal care items, fresh meats, all alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at unbeatable prices. Spend $7,500 and more and receive a free gift while stocks last. Pay your bills at Bill Express, also money transfer at Western Union, all at one convenient location. Visit us today at 36 to 37 New Road, Fridden Hoop, West Coast, Demerara. Telephone numbers 254-0334 or 254-0666. For delivery, check out Top Notch Taxi right next door, 24-hour service. Telephone numbers 254-1324 or 254-1325.
Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. A local pilot and businessman is calling on the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority to improve the infrastructure of controlling the airspace. More in this report. Captain Gerald Gavaya during an exclusive interview said that more can be done by the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority to remedy air traffic within Guyana. Captain Gavaya added that those pilots heading into or coming out of the hinterland have to depend exclusively on coordinates and the main rivers. He said the air traffic controllers at the Chedijegan International Airport only have a short radius to transmit commands. Captain Gavaya also noted that the air traffic controllers work in a 75 mile radius and so the minute the planes fly out of that fifth that 75 mile boundary they're in in uncontrolled airspace and so if you have 20 planes or 10 planes for example going to kaichiro falls in a weekend those 10 planes are all converging onto kaichiro falls runway and the pilots all need to be remembering where each other is and calling each and separating and that is not a good thing captain gavai asserted that the aviation sector cannot be operating in the same manner it did in the 1930s. He added that economic activities, including the number of small aircrafts, have increased in the hinterland. In fact, unfortunately, what I'm seeing is a lot of, um, they seem to be focusing their effort only on policing the, the, the operators and, and, and trying to see if anybody make a mistake so they could jump on them, rather than say, well, hey, let's work together, let's work together and improve the overall infrastructure systems like at, at Kaichiro Falls in the weekends if you know there will be 20 flights going into Kaichiro, 30 flights going into Kaichiro, put in a traffic control operate on the ground with a radio and, con and, tr and separate the traffic if you know it's happening in the Northwest District. It's not happening unfortunately. He also revealed that aircrafts heading to the Eugene F. Karai International Airport have almost collided with each other because of the congestion. Ogle Airport and you, it's, it's a serious issue. There's so many planes converging on the Ogle Airport. And I'm, I'm getting reports from my pilots about near misses. The Ogle Airport, it is such a congested airport that constantly, um, constantly you have traffic converging in that airport. And, um, and separation issues are a big thing, even though there's an air traffic control. So they probably need to up the quality and level of the air traffic control services at Ogle. Nikhil Jonder reporting for MTV News Update. Police ranks of the Mounted Branch Station in Latham, whilst on patrol yesterday in the Takatu River area, detained a male with a foreign accent who, upon seeing the troopers, began acting in a suspicious manner. The detainee was then positively identified as the infamous Trotta Rodriguez, who recently, in the company of 99 others, escaped from prison in neighboring Brazil. A policy is in progress to develop a disaster risk center in Region 9 for the monitoring and safekeeping of disaster relief supplies during the wet and dry seasons. Here is more. Chairman of Region 9, Brian Alicock, said preparations are moving fast pace to cater for the dry and wet seasons. According to him, five water catchment facilities have already been constructed to safeguard water supplies for the dry season. In addition to this, dams will be built in the mountainous villages to cater for the dry season, which occurs in April, May and August, September. We are doing uh, topographical surveys. Uh, we are mostly contracted using a drone. 
to have this, this done so they know the levels of the, the uh, earth and, uh, in the areas in the swamp areas how far the water comes and so um, because um, you know so when they put it on the dams people are kind of skeptical in that it would flood some amount of uh, like tiers of land. While the wet season varies at different times, the chairman noted that the region is never fully prepared as rainfall sometimes comes in abundance. However, a disaster risk committee has been established to formulate a policy to develop the disaster risk center. This center will be responsible for monitoring and safeguarding disaster relief supplies for the region. Yeah, well, we, we develop in all the time. Um, we recently had CDC here back in, with us again and going into the villages to help develop a policy uh, for the regional and disaster risk management in the region. So we are working we are working on that and you know, we're not finished with the policy as yet because you know, you gotta look take into consideration what the national policy is and what um leg pieces of legislation we have to govern these uh, policies that we're going to develop. The region, which is exposed to severe droughts, often sees a loss of crops and livestock during that time. The Canal Polo Water Use Association workers, who downed tools earlier in the month, were eventually paid. Nikhil John tells us more. The workers who are employed with the Canal Polo Water Users Association have been paid. The workers made the announcement today after a call was made to them. One of the workers claimed that he received his pay on Wednesday morning. The workers said the chairman of the Association of Canal No. 1 came on Wednesday morning and delivered the cash. On Tuesday, News Update visited the workers and listened to their plight. The workers told this newscast that they were employed to clean the approximately 7 miles canal on January 2-9. to 9. However, when it was time to get their monies, the chairman of the Water Users Association informed them that funds have not been released by the government. The workers downed their tools after they were not paid for that brief period. Nikhil Jondu reporting for MTV News Update. Stay tuned for court round up the Dermore Harbour Bridge schedule as well as the Ghana Stock Exchange. Introducing our new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty.
episode went down at the Georgian Magistrate Courts on Thursday, January 25. A 30-year-old man was on Wednesday sentenced to one month in jail by magistrate for Bewazor after being caught red-handed in the driver's seat of a car he broke into. Jason Yearwood of Lethem admitted that on January 22, at Blissingen Road, Georgetown, he attempted to break into the car of an employee of the Guyana Water Incorporated. According to reports, the GWI employee had parked the motor car at the company's Vilsingen Road office and later returned and found that Yearwood broke into the car and was in the car driver's seat. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 757. Let's turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge schedule. What do people say with Rajesh Lakhan is next? Stay with us. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, Feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. With enhanced vision, your eyes become the windows to the world. Appreciating moments as you capture life in every image, creating memories and discovering the beauty around us. See, do and enjoy any occasion of life in style with superior lens technology from De Silva's Optical. With Transitions, Crizal, and Verilux lenses, you'll find the perfect fit for you. De Silva's Optical South Road. Look better, see better. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation.
Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Our topic on this week's edition of What the People Say is the use of social media and the impact it has on children's academic performance. Here is what the people had to say. Yes and no. Yes, depend on how to go about it, right? Because some would abuse it and not only that, it depends on the parental control. If the parents monitor them, it will be for the benefit. But if they don't benefit them, if they don't monitor them, there is it. Right, they go home well. Because look at it. Everybody are curious, even more so the youths. So they would go on many, you know, venture in other areas that they shouldn't. Do you think parental guidance should be a, a must at all times? Yes, yes. It's important. Right? Or else you won't get a good society. At least in the future. Because right now the society here, why? But if you get more control, you get a better future. A certain perspective to a certain extent, um, we would say yes, that does have an um, influence. Because most of the times, what, what children see or what children read, they want to practice it out in the public. And what do you think can be put in place to deal with this issue? Well, I think there should be like certain restrictions on the social media where certain comments and certain things should be posted up. It depends on how the children interact with other persons. Like, Say you're on Facebook and you're chatting with various persons, you get distracted from your schoolwork. So yeah, it both impacts you good and bad. Do you think it's all responsibility lies with the parents so the school should take some responsibility? I think it's both because they're both contributing to the children's studies and stuff. So both of them should get in practice to set up these restrictions. Well, that is what parents are there for. You're supposed to look and see what they're doing. You just can't accept it. You have to look at it and see what they're doing. You have to talk to them, uh, talk to them about these things, and then you move on, All right? If you were just supposed to leave them to go ahead and do it, they can do anything they feel like doing, All right? So the important thing to do is to monitor them, but don't handicap them. Well, I think it has a negative impact because children will perform better if they are not so much on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and Twitter, and the rest of it. I believe with all my heart that children will do better and we'll have a better society as well because it, it makes people get access to violence and when they see that they want to try it out. Look at the crime rate right now all because people watching too, too many violent movies and whatever else they have on social media. Thank you. Um, I believe it is. It has been from the beginning of time on to now. Um, primarily because social media is filled with a lot of distractions and um, if you know a lot about cultural imperialism which means that a lot of the foreign values are there for Caribbean people particularly so we get caught up with this instead of following our own culture so I believe yes it does have a major major um, impact on our academic performance because um, would you rather study and read your book or go and see what's the latest vine or um, was the latest funny video out. It's a hard thing to choose between, but you should be choose the easier, the easier option. So yeah, I believe so. And to curb this issue, do you think the sole responsibility lies with the parents? Um, the responsibility lies with the parents, but also lies with the students, because as a student, you have to know where your priorities lie. Um, the parents can only do so much and no more, because I'm pretty sure when you were young also, your parents could tell you not to go and pick up Facebook or whatever social media was around that time, but it's going to be up to you to listen to them or not, so it goes both ways. I wouldn't say it is solely on the parents, but the parents have some responsibility as well. But it also you can happen in school. It's the, par the parents, I got four kids, it's the parents. You have to, they're going to get anything in school. The problem is for you to follow it up and let them understand what's good, what's bad. Right? You as a parent is who have to do that. Teachers can only teach. 
right? Parents is who have to guide it. For MTV News Update, I'm Rajesh Lakan. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight. But before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. GDF shows gross disrespect for media practitioners. Gawu's president says he will not resign amid calls for him to do so. TIGI rekindles call for park and media contract to be scrapped. And in court, let their man sent to jail for one month after being caught trying to steal from a GWI vehicle. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Friday, January 26. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.